Hi everyone, this is Pat from PSA Custom Creations. And today's video is going to be about a Bridgeport 8F crossfeed. Where I'm having a problem is that when I move the crossfeed to the left or to the right, it works perfectly fine. However, it will not disengage, or at least the handle won't allow it to crank when it's in the neutral position. It's not going anywhere. So, what I'm trying to do is figure out what's inside it that's catching so that I can fix that so I can use the hand to, or hand will crank this over. Uh, now I haven't found a whole lot online. I've looked some, probably not as much as I should have, on how to disassemble this and go ahead and repair this uh, this problem. But I figured I'd shoot a quick little video, show you what I'm doing at least, maybe you'll learn from my mistakes. The first thing I've done is drain the fluid or part of the fluid from here. Now that's what I did initially and then I actually put it back together so I can shoot this video. Realistically, what I probably should have done is taken this lower assembly off where the control unit is, and that way I wouldn't have oil dripping all over here. So what I've done is I've put it back together just so you can see what it looks like. I'll go ahead and take a couple of the screws apart, show you the parts as I take them, uh, show you the pieces as I take them apart, and let you see where I'm at, and hopefully we can figure out what the problem is. And again, I apologize for the tracking noise that's going on there. I got an issue with my digital camera. I need to buy another one. And as I've said, I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, I got my hex wrench. I've taken most of the screws off here. I've got a couple in place so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, what I found is that just the top two screws are holding the front part of this handle in place. I'm going to go ahead and take them out and be able to drop this front cover. I put a five gallon bucket with some rags and some other stuff in there below this so I can catch some of the fluid that's dripping. Make sure you do the same so you're not having a mess all over your garage. Now what I had to take off is just these top two screws and these bottom two down here and this lower assembly comes off exposing all the connections and all the wires. In order to move this out of the way some, you've got the left and right switch connectors. Let's go ahead and disassemble those. Now I can move this out of the way. There are two Allen screws holding this bottom part in place. Now, what I should have said earlier is make sure you unplug this before you start working on these electronics. That was the first thing I did is unplug this because I don't want to mess with live electricity while I'm fooling around with it. Especially if I've got oil all over my hands, don't want to get something in there and zap myself. Once I've lowered this out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and set it off behind here. The reason why I'm doing this, and again, whether this was what it's supposed to do or not, this is the way I'm doing it. I'm doing this so I can get up here and take this front plate off, drain some more fluid out of there, and see what's inside of this. Now what I've also done is gone ahead and marked where my lever is on this, taking the Allen head screw, loosened it up, move it out of the way. So now it's supposed to be in the neutral position. It's supposed to be in the neutral position, and I'll see what's going to happen. Again, I'm taking this front cover off. When I do this, I've already drained some of the oil out of here, so I shouldn't have quite as much. But you can still see there's going to be some oil dripping over, so I've got my five gallon bucket with some rags ready to go ahead and start catching this mess. Make sure you Stick all the screws off to the side, try to group them together, at least that's the way I do it. So hopefully I'm less likely to make a mistake on this when I put it back together or get confused over which screws are which. Now as I'm taking this off, I can feel there's a bit of tension from a spring or a lever back here. So 
so if there's a bit of tension on there or a spring, we're hoping that this thing doesn't fly apart. And of course I lose the pieces all over the garage floor and spend the next two hours trying to find them. Now when I open this up, that's what I've got. This is a shifter lever, or what I'm calling the shifter lever, it's moving back and forth. This spring and detent, or lever, are probably what's supposed to be allowing this. And if you can look, you can actually see there's quite a bit of corrosion inside here. I'm going to see what I can do. Now just as I was moving this around, got this piece here, I also see that there is something loose in the back. I'm going to have to try to fish this thing out. Of course, I could be just driving it back farther and farther back. So if I look at this, that looks to me like something's broken. Could be wrong, but I don't believe it's supposed to look like that. So now I gotta sit here and try to figure out what the piece is, and more importantly, how to fix it. As I said, this is working on the power feed, but it's just not working. Alright, so the roller that I found, as I put my hand back here, I can feel that it came and it broke off of this piece. So it looks as if this roller was supposed to be connected there and as you're moving this back and forth it's potentially moving this arm. I'm going to go ahead and take these electronic switches off down below see what I can do with this piece to kind of move it out of the way but I'm also going to have to take this and clean it up looks like this boots a little bit a little bit worn and that's probably why I'm having a little bit of oil leaking down below on the bottom of this housing All right. In order to take this piece off, look like there's a pin holding it in place on this rod. So I'm going to tap this pin out, hopefully slide this down, and I'll be able to lift this lever out. Now from what it looks like, I took this top screw off. Now it does have an O-ring in it. So when you put it back together, you're going to have to make sure, or I'm going to have to make sure I inspect the O-ring to make sure it doesn't leak, as well as a hole in the bottom. What this arm does is it catches back here. And basically, to me, it looks like it's acting as a clutch and engaging and disengaging these gears. I can feel where it broke off back here, so I'm going to go ahead and tap this pin out, drop this down, see if I can remove this part of the shift rod, and look at this piece and slide it out of the way and see what I can do with it. You can see where... I can see where this piece was supposed to be on here. It's a cast iron piece. And it clearly broke. To me it's looking like it did that from all this rust and corrosion on it. Which did not allow this bearing to turn. This I can feel was not turning at all either. So it just looks like it just put too much pressure on it. So, looks like what I'm going to have to do is take these apart, see if I can clean these and reuse them. These three screws with bearings on. If I can't, looks like I'm going to be forced to buy this whole assembly.